Here we go. Let's start with a little safety brief, shall we? Today's video is brought to us thanks to the generosity of LuckyGunner.com. Check them out for all your ammunition needs. So if we have any type of medical emergency, the first thing we're gonna do is call for an immediate ceasefire. When you hear that ceasefire command, the first thing I want you to do is all stop. Finger straight, safety on. After we've gotten that done, I'm gonna give an all clear. When you hear the all clear, that'll be our signal to start lending aid to the down man. That'll be your guys' cue to go ahead and initiate EMS. Whenever you're calling EMS, it is always, make sure you specify this is a training accident, but we have a gunshot wound and we need immediate medical service. Any communication with EMS is always deemed life-threatening. So any injury is gonna be life-threatening, right? I don't care if they get pissed off that it's an, you know, it's an extremity wound, it's always gonna be life-threatening. Uh, we'll lend aid to the down man as best as we can. I have a med kit in my bag. Um, I'm sure there's a couple other med kits around here. We'll go ahead and administer the best medical care that we possibly can while they go ahead and communicate. Freddie, just because of the facility where we're at here, I'm gonna probably suggest that you drive up to the main gate and escort them straight here. Freddie, if you happen to be the injured person, John, you'll do the same thing, right? Communications out here, cell phone reception is good, so we shouldn't have a problem with that. Um, once EMS arrives on scene, we'll go ahead and turn over definitive care to them. Next senior man, take everybody off to the side in a safe manner, have them unload and clear. Guys, even though you want to help, the best way that you can help is staying out of the way unless we call for you, right? Unless I call for somebody, hey, I need this, hey, I need that, all right? So, again, if we have a medical emergency, the first thing we're gonna do is call for a ceasefire. When you hear that ceasefire, it's an all stop. Finger straight, safety on, go ahead and let them hang. Once I have control of the firing line, I'm gonna give an all clear. On that all clear, a couple things are gonna happen. Mike and myself are gonna lend aid to the down man. John and Freddie are gonna to communicate to the EMS. They're gonna then depart and retrieve the EMS assets, bring them straight here. Next senior man of the class, take everybody off to the side in a safe manner, have them unload and clear. We'll lend aid to the down man until definitive care arrives. We'll return over to them and then we'll brief on what we're gonna do after that. Does anybody have any questions on the med brief? Anything? All right, next. Range safety. So, a no mechanical device has a will of its own. A firearm doesn't miraculously discharge. It's gonna be discharged by human intervention. So the aspect of safety is gonna be central to everything that we're gonna be doing over the next two days, okay? The first thing we wanna do is we want to cover our safety rules as well as safety violations, okay? So these safety rules are gonna be integrated into all handling of firearms, not just in this class, but I recommend that you take this on anywhere you go or anytime you're around firearms, whether you're handling the firearms or you're around somebody else handling firearms, right? So the first rule, all firearms are always loaded. I'm gonna treat every firearm that I see right now as if it's loaded. Second rule, keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. That safe direction is this giant backstop that we have here. Third rule, always keep your trigger finger on the home position until you're ready to fire. So there's two things there. One, what is the home position? My home position is a actual location on the firearm that is separated from the actual plane of the trigger. So being in front of my trigger is not home position. I need to be completely off my trigger, separated completely from the plane. All right, and there's two reasons, there's actually several reasons why, but the big reasons have to do with the way that we respond to stress, right? The fight or flight scenario. If you're surprised, if you're caught off guard, if something happens, the first thing you're gonna do is probably do an involuntary clinch of your body. And if your trigger finger is in front of that trigger guard, no matter what you try to do, that finger is still gonna have enough force to move onto the trigger. Now, if the firearm is off safe, now we have a problem. The second thing has to do with interlimb interaction. Whatever I do with this arm, I will do with this arm. All right, so if I'm doing something forcefully or violently with this arm, I can expect the same from here. A third one, so if you're surprised, is one, interlimb interaction is another, balance disruption is another thing. So that means I'm walking and I lose my balance and I fall. As I'm falling, the first thing my body wants to do is protect itself from the fall, and that's that involuntary clinch, okay? Can anybody here hold their eyes open while they sneeze, right? 
that's an example of an involuntary reflex that you can't control. You cannot keep your eyes open when you try to sneeze. And you would look really funny if you were trying. I would like to watch that actually. That would be cool. All right. So the next rule, and this is indicative of the firearms that we're working with, which are the rifles, is that you will, or I'm sorry, I didn't cover ready to fire. So how do we define ready to fire? Ready to fire means that you've identified a target, you've moved the firearm from the point of carry to the target, you have confirmed your sights, then you can go ahead and deactivate the safety and then you can actually fire the shot, right? So there's a lot of things that have to happen before you can actually do that. ID the target, move the gun from point of carry to the target, confirm your sights, select fire and squeeze off your shot. Okay, so it's not just as simple as folks make it out to be. That's how we define ready to fire. The fourth rule is going to be the safety manipulation. So we are an on safe organization. That means everything you do will begin with the gun on safe. So when I tell you to stand by at a ready position, the gun will be at the ready, finger straight, safety on. On the up command, or when I give you the command to fire, you'll go ahead, move the rifle from the point of carry to the target, confirm sight, select fire, and then pull the trigger. All right, so the firearm will always be on safe. As soon as you're done and are going to come off the target, the safety will come back on. Finger goes straight, safety on. During today, particularly in the morning, you will hear me use these kind of commands to help you move the weapon off the target, which is finger straight, first thing I want you to do, safety on, second thing I want you to do, then let them hang. The last rule is be sure of your target and what's beyond. Now here it's pretty simple because everything that's downrange is a shoot target. You don't have to really do a lot of positive target identification, but I will tell you this. We will be shooting back here at the 50 yard line. Those targets look kind of the same right? Especially when you're looking through a small paper tube. The one thing that you can do is if you look, the targets are numbered. On the lower left hand corner, you'll see a number. I'm going to be giving you a target, a number. You're going to be assigned to that target number for the entire class. Okay. But before you shoot on a target, you need to make sure that it's your target because should you shoot on somebody else's target, not only do you disqualify yourself, but you've disqualified whoever's target you shot on. Okay. So be sure of your target. Any questions on those rules? So these rules again are, all guns are always loaded, keep the muzzle in a safe direction, keep your finger straight until ready to fire, manipulate the safeties, positive target ID. Any questions? All right, these are also the safety violations that you can get dinged on. We have a three strike policy, which means first time I make the assumption that I did not explain it clear enough to you. Second time, you understood the instructions, but you still violated the safety rule and therefore you'll take a step back you'll have a seat relax a little bit think about what you did then the third time you'll be dismissed from class okay so use the brain think your way through these problems anybody have any questions so far fantastic one of the things that i share with people is kind of where these sa these safety rules came from a lot of times people think that they came from this flat range right now, I'm not saying that they didn't kind of originate from this flat range, but really where they come from is working in a real world environment. Being actually out in a real world environment and having to employ these safety rules. This is how we work in small units to ensure that we keep ourselves safe. Right? If you look at these safety rules from that kind of vision, that filter, if you will. All right, let's see. All right. I always keep my muzzle pointed in a safe direction. Or all guns are always loaded, right? I walk out in the streets, I see somebody pointing a gun at me, I naturally assume that gun is loaded. Simple, right? I gotta keep my muzzle under my control because I don't wanna cover any of my teammates. I need to make sure that I'm ready to fire and that I have priority of shot and I'm not, in, I'm not stepping on somebody else's shot. Right? Putting myself in danger, putting them in danger. I need to make sure that I'm safe with my, my, my rifle simply because I need to be moving with that weapon on safe. And then lastly, that positive target identification. The last thing we want is a public incident where we shoot a no shoot, right? So those safety rules are kind of how I've always kind of lived my life as far as, you know, a shooter is concerned is that they, they came from the real world and then we use them here in a training environment. 